The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 90. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's show, we gave some tips on separating yourself from Uncle Bob, discussed digital file delivery, and ask the question, are you writing Dear John emails to your prospective clients? I certainly hope not after last week's show. If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, watch with the popular Stitcher and TuneIn radio apps, and now watch in HD on TiVo. Yes, so Joe, we yes. are back. We are back. 90, the big nine zero. Episode 90, that's right. We should probably try and plan something for the big 100, right? We said we're going to. We have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Guess we got to figure that out. 10 more shows. We got 10 weeks, right? (laughs) (laughs) It comes really quickly. But yeah, we have 10 more weeks and that'll be at number 100. Wow. Yeah. That'll be good. That'll be amazing. So it'd be a milestone for for certain. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. It is. That's right. So we're going to be delving into some good topics this uh, this show, huh? Yeah, yeah. We got a little bit of news, and we got some uh, some um, good businessy stuff. I think that really every photographer needs to listen to about pricing. Um, we kind of touched on a little bit of stuff last week, and it kind of continued the conversation a little bit. Yeah, we're going to kind of do like a threefold. Uh, this will be part two this week. Yeah. Um, so it'll be good. Yeah, that we got a lot of good response from uh, last week's show. So um, that's good. Yep. I'm going to keep it going for you guys and give you some more tips and tricks and stuff to look out for pitfalls and all kinds of other stuff. All kinds. So anyway, something cool happened with Twitter, right? With their the, their updating of their, what is it, photos and videos? Yeah, um, yeah. So they're rolling out some uh, new enhancements that make it easier for you to view photos and videos. Um, thank goodness. Kind of in your timeline and in the search results. So if you just uh, click on a photo or video, it'll actually do a popover. So you can see it there rather than going to another window or or something like that, which is really back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I always hated that. It's kind of a pain. And uh, now they're including uh, support for videos from Vine, YouTube, Vimeo, and I guess some of their other partners. Um, So that'll uh, appear in the expanded tweet. So like when you click on it, it expands out. You know, and you can see uh, the video and stuff actually in line rather than, again, jumping over to another website. So it makes it a little yeah. bit more convenient. Yeah, they seem to be doing some pretty good work over there. It's there's you know, their app, even on their mobile on the mobile phone um, is getting better um, kind of by the day. Yeah, so it's just horrible for the longest time. Um, and it's, you know, you know, they keep buying companies and bringing on good talent and, you know, yep. eventually it's going to, you know, kind of be something great. Same thing with Facebook. I mean, that thing has been so kludgy for so long. It's really starting to come together a little bit, still has some things that I just don't like, but you know, it's definitely getting better. You yeah. see that it's, it's starting to age a little bit. Sure. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, the Facebook mobile app. I know I just updated it, uh, this past week and, uh, (laughs) there's a bug or something in it because, uh, it's, it's crashed on me quite a few times. So, um, I'm sure that I'll be seeing a a new update rolling through very soon. Probably. Did you update to the new iPhone, the iOS, uh, iPhone? What is it? The six one? one. No, I didn't. I'm always one of those guys that, that waits a little bit. I wait with WordPress. I wait with the operating systems on the computers. I, I like to wait just a little bit because, you know, I need this thing to work. And if six one has a bug in it and all of a sudden my phone is crashing for no apparent reason, (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I know it's, it's been like that. Like, Ever since I known you, I'm like the test box, you know, I'm yeah. like the the sandbox that goes and you know the early adopter. Everything is you know bleeding edge, and then you're like, yeah, did that work? Like, yeah, no, yeah. Um, it's, it's broken. Like, yeah, it didn't work. Oh, good. I'm glad I didn't update. Yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time with WordPress too on the on the on my site for um, all the photography stuff, and it's like, oh, now nothing is working, and then I'll 
tell you and I'll tell everyone else. I'll tweet out, hey, don't update. Don't, don't update. Yeah, I it's did. Broken. Don't do it. Yeah. But if it works, I tell everyone to update too. So and back up and all the rest of the stuff that I do each and every time. So but anyway, so that's really cool. That's uh, that's that's interesting. And yep. at least they are kind of moving forward and it's not, you know, it's getting better as they go. So, yeah, exactly. Um, one more thing that came through that I, that's, you know, kind of dear to my heart. We, we did an episode and we were talking about, um, let me see, it was like, we we're talking about like robotic stuff. We we're talking about going to camera stores, going to the Radio Shack and how great it was, guys, right? Back in the day, if you're a geek, kind of like, like me, you know, going to Radio Shack was like so much fun because you would go there and they actually had like little robotic stuff, they oh, had little yeah. kits that you can build and, yeah, you know, all now kinds they're of doing, toys. yeah, now I don't know what they're doing in there. They're selling phones. Phones, yeah, but, phones, TVs. Yep. A couple of diodes in the back, resistors and stuff inside yeah. of a box, but that's about <laughs> that's it. About really, it. It's really sad. But um, the camera store has kind of gone gone that way too. But regardless, it's a whole nother show. But, um, you know, this thing came through that I really thought was cool and it's called the Raspberry Pi and you can't eat it. No. Um, it's really neat. What did you think about it? Yeah, this sucker is, is pretty cool. Um, you know, this is definitely right up your alley, kind of the the Tinker Tom type of stuff, and uh, yes, running Linux on it and everything. This Love this it. thing, it's like a small circuit board computer. It's right. it's really not much larger than the size of a credit card, really. Yeah, it's like an Altoids box. You can yeah, stick it that's what, yeah, right. That's what they were saying. And, uh, you know, and it's got an, it's got an HDMI port on it within an, an RCA video port. So you can plug into your big TV or, or an old tube TV for that matter. Yes. Um, it's got audio jack. It's got a, a USB port. Um, the heck they got um it's yeah, got it's a, and it's two usb ports too not just one yeah it's got um, a LAN port you know, what i think is amazing is you have this computer it's this small but it also does full it can actually stream and and at full hd yeah. 1080p 30 frames you know it does the h264 um playback it also is compatible with um apple's proprietary airplay very very cool yep. it runs the arm um uh, processor so you can dump on multiple revisions of or or multiple um builds of linux so ubuntu uh, it's it's kind of but debian um and a few other ones are out there if you guys are into um unix or linux or any alternative operating systems like i am is you know i'm kind of like the um, the tinkerer, as you call me, what is it? Tinkerer Tom? Tinker Tom, Tom yeah. today. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm that guy, but, um, yeah, so you can run these, you know, uh, okay. So what do you do with this thing? You know, how does this deal with photography or whatever? So now just think about this computer. Now it's a full blown computer. Um, the operating system is actually installed onto an SD card, which is really cool. It, it has, yeah, there's no on onboard hard drive or anything like no. that. It's all flash based through an SD card. Right. All flash based. So let's say you can you start out with a four gig, you can put up to 32 gig on the SD card. Mm -hmm. um, it, the the processor is interesting. It's 512 of RAM on it. It has a, both a CPU and a GPU and the GPU is sick. It's like 24 gigaflops. I think it does or something crazy. Obviously, because it can stream um, full HD. Um, you can hook up cameras, this thing, all kinds of stuff. But but check this out. So let's say you just put a TV in your studio. Um, well, you don't want cords and everything running all over the place. Well, through the through the USB cable, you can either put like a little small hard drive in the back, yep. or you can, you know, let's say throw files like for a slideshow or a video that you want to display on the TV and stick this little circuit board behind the TV. You don't even know that it's there yep. and have all this stuff running. You can also do Wi-Fi using a little sure. dongle, plug in a dongle, and now load the stuff from your camera right over to it during a shoot. I mean, all kinds of stuff with no wires. And people are like, how, how is he doing this? You know, where where's the computer? What's going on here? So, yeah, um, yeah, that's really cool. I mean, you know, I mean, it's kind of neat just for the, the, the fact of playing with it, just tinkering right. around. But but from a practical standpoint, yeah, I mean, it's it's what perfect for sli showing movies in your studio, for doing slideshows. You know, just think about it. If you have a retail location or if you have a studio that you have people come to you for portraits or what have you, one would think that you would have the studio set up. So, it, so it's kind of nice looking. So you have an, an entry area where people can kind of hang out, maybe got a few chairs or what have you. Um, having like a nice big flat panel hanging on the wall, rolling with your imagery on there, maybe uh, rolling with some videos you've shot on there. I mean, that's great. I mean, maybe it's similar to the stuff you have on your website. Maybe it's new stuff that's not on your website. Sure. And while your client is there waiting, 
again, it kind of just reassures to them like, well, these images are amazing. I really, I made the right decision, you know, connecting yeah. with this person. Yeah. And you know, it, it comes automatically with uh it's 10 slash 100. So it'll do, you know, 100 T. So it's, it, it's built, has built in ethernet. So you don't right. have to go dongle. Yeah, so you can just plug a cable in too. Sure. Okay. So here it is guys. How much is it? What do you think? You know, hundred, 200 bucks, whatever. No, the grand total of 35 bucks. Yep. Yep, thirty five bucks. It's I'm like, nuts. oh my god! I did, you know, this would just be fun just to play with. I mean, no matter what. Um, so yeah, so thirty five bucks. For I know the whole you'll thing be getting one. Go, I will. The, um, the order is in. <laughs> so I will. I will let you guys know. I'll. I'll show it to you when I do um, get it in um, in a couple of weeks, probably. But yeah, so Raspberry Pi coming my way, and uh, we'll let you know. So it's kind of kind of cool, and you have something similar that that you use over there. Um, you got two of them, I think, for your kids for the holidays. Yeah, the, yeah. On one of the previous shows, I mentioned the the Samsung Chromebook. Right, that's right. And you know, the the kids have been using my wife's MacBook Pro, and they've been trying to get on you know my computers and stuff. I'm like, no. Of course. <laughs> you yes. know, my son's using this old i um, iBook that I had, and that thing was just a dog. I mean, it couldn't even play his Flash games and stuff like that yeah so you know we made the decision to to go out we wanted to get them computers so they're not messing with my wife's computer or my computer and uh you know we were looking like well what can we get i don't really want to go out and drop a thousand bucks a piece on macbooks yeah go dump a juice box into yeah they go to, exactly to jump yeah drop some uh food and some nasty things all over the screen and stuff sure so I looked at these Samsung Chromebooks. So they're 240 bucks, 250 bucks, something like that. Um, they're they're small. They've only got like an 11.6 inch screen. So they're, they're kind of tiny. Um, 1.7 gigahertz dual processor. So they have a, nice. a fair amount of power to them. For, I think they're all solid state too. It's all they SD, are right? all solid no state. Drive. Yeah, no moving parts. It's all, you know, um, SSD hard drive. And it runs on the Google Chrome operating system which awesome. if you've never played with it, it's basically a, a web browser based operating system. Right. So out of the box, you can surf the web and that's pretty much about it. And it boots up in like five, 10 seconds or something. Really SSD, fast. Really, really fast. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, it's a great alternative to getting a full blown laptop um, for a kid. Oh. And even for, you know, um, an adult that's, uh, you know, maybe, you know, the wife just wants to check her email and go on to Facebook or something, or maybe, yep. you know, you have an elderly mom and dad and you don't want to give them something that they just don't need sure. um, with all kinds of stuff that you're going to be going over there doing, you know, <laughs> all the technical support was, I know I do that so often. Yeah, anyway, so yeah. that's another story, but yeah, you don't want to be doing that. So you give them one of these and you just, you flip it open. The thing is instant on basically. All and you do is create a know. Google account if you don't already have one that way it, cause it stores all your bookmarks and everything like that in the cloud. So you have right. to have an account so it knows where to store the stuff. Um, but you can use it as a guest. It doesn't store any of your bookmarks or your browser history or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, I mean, this thing is really neat. I mean, it's got Wi-Fi built in. It's got a built-in mic with a webcam. So you can do cool stuff with that, Google Hangouts, things like that. Um, it's, uh, you know, like you said, it's really good for web browsing and email. I mean, you can't run any apps on it other than Google right. apps, like Google Docs, Google Spreadsheet, things like that. Yeah, so it's you, its own proprietary operating system. So it's, a, it's basically a um, cloud computer that runs in the cloud. <laughs> It's yeah, but it does have offline bucks. mode, so you can use Google Docs offline. Right. Um, but you're, you know, you're not. I mean, and, you know, it'll save locally and then sync with the cloud, things like that. But sure. you know, you're not running Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that. I mean, that that's not what this thing is about. But right. for two hundred forty nine dollars, it's cheaper than yeah, a tablet. Cheap. You know, it's yeah, you know what I can see. So for the studio, this would be a great way to kind of pump in. Um, your, uh, your images kind of like yes. as you're going, stick it on like, a, let's say a cart. Um, yep. so a lot of times we'll be doing a shoot and let's say it's a commercial shoot and we have a director, um, that comes in or, um, uh, someone that actually needs to see what's going on continuously. And instead of having to stop, load the cards, put them, you know, let yep. them take a look this way. We can actually send them over, you know, through the air, a couple images as they, as they're coming through. Um, or we can tether in using USB or whatnot. But what's cool is you can put this on a little cart, doesn't weigh nothing, hand it to them. 
Yep. Uh, you don't have to worry about them dropping it. You know, it weighs absolutely nothing. There's no moving parts. You don't have to move, worry about jiggling it or anything. Right. Um, it's a really good, I think it's a good studio piece as like an extra component yeah, um, absolutely. to the image capture. And, you know, also let's say you have someone in your studio and let's say you don't want to use the big TV like we suggested with the $35 computer, which I think is just too cool. But um, you can actually hand this to someone in their lap and, you know, they can go through all of your stuff while they're sitting there instead of giving them, you know, old school, you would give them like a couple of leather albums. Let's say you're a wedding photographer, it'd be sure. like, here you go. You know, well, you can also do that so they can see finished product because you want to be able to smell that leather and touchy feely that really sells. But if you have, you know, maybe let's say 10, 20 different weddings that you have some really great shots from, why not give them the computer and they can sit there and yep. kind of, uh, you know, uh, rummage through them on there too. So it's better than them look um, online. You can still put some online, but when you have them in your studio and you got their butts in the seat, you can actually sell them a lot yeah. easier than on the phone or through Skype or through email. You know, they're sitting there and you can actually have a conversation with them, shake their hand. And that interaction usually is what sells even yeah. more than the photos. So yeah, absolutely. Anyways. And just a, another little side note, they do have a 3G version of this thing. Um, it's like a hundred dollars more. I think it's three forty nine. Cool. So if you wanted something that is purely mobile, um, could be a good option. Yeah. So do you have to pay monthly for that three G, or is it like um, you know, kind of like the Nooks and stuff, or whatever it was that had the yeah, uh, had like had that, their own three G service? Um, yeah. I'm not sure to be honest with you. I've never really mm -hmm. looked okay. into it because I I have no need for it. Right. Um, with right. the iPhone and everything else. Yeah. And but, well, you know, plus you have Wi Fi. That means you take it anywhere. Exactly. You know, you go to Starbucks or something. You're having breakfast. You could still get online. So right, right. But um, yeah, they do have the three G version, so that is available. Um, you guys can look into it a little bit further. We'll have a link in the show notes to the to the product page that gives more information about it but um yeah it's it's really cool and you know for 249 it was a great idea for the kids i mean because if they break it over time eh, you know what yeah <laughs> who, it's, who cares it's kind of it's, a disposable yeah, unit at disposable that computers yep amazing that's exactly so all right guys um we're going to take a quick break here to hear from a couple of our sponsors then we're going to get into some very interesting stuff so stay tuned hang in there are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days photographers use multiple internet-connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPC at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drives. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where ShootProof comes in. At ShootProof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. ShootProof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. 
Shootproof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through Shootproof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All Shootproof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try Shootproof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Shootproof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. Shootproof. Upload, share, sell, print. All right, so we are back. And last week, you know, we talked about um, preparing images to be sent out to your client on a disc. And we were talking about preparing the, the physical size of it, the pixel dimension, and the compression on it, that you don't really need to send the highest quality, highest res images out to your client. And, exactly. and that kind of, you know, we kind of just touched on the idea of it, you know, compression and image size for your website as well. And, and I really wanted to kind of expand on that a little bit more, um, seeing how, you know, I'm in WordPress every day and dealing with website development. And when it comes to photographers, especially, you know, we're looking at images, right? I mean, we want to have big, beautiful images on our website. And so compression and file size is so important to take into account because of loading speeds on the viewer's end. Yep, if you go to a website, I'm sure most of you guys know, you go and you're wandering around on Google, you find, let's say, 10 different sites that have the similar information on it, you go to the very top one, because that's what we always do. Right. Um, And you go there and you see the thing spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. After four or five seconds, maybe 10, the absolute most, most people don't even last 10, but four or five, six seconds, next. That site is gone, you're back to Google, you hit back and you go down right down to the next one. So yeah. you wanna make sure that the site is loading as fast as possible. If not, you're gonna be you're you're gonna leave money on the table. People are gonna be leaving. Right. That's exactly right. So how do you figure out, you know, what size your images need to be? Well, that that's from your design standpoint. You know, how big do you want your portfolio images to be? When somebody clicks on a thumbnail and the large version of the file pops up. How big is that going to be? You need to determine that, what you want the user experience to be. Now, keep in mind, people are viewing these from small laptop screens, 13-inch laptop screens. They're viewing them from tablets. They're viewing them from mobile phones. So, you know, the days of people sitting behind 23, 24, and larger monitors, the common person are really less and less. I mean, of course, we are because we're working on studio stuff. You know, but they are sitting in smaller screen sizes. So you really don't need the physical size to be all that large. So what you need to do is figure out what that size is going to be, the pixel dimension, and then figure out what compression setting you can get away with when you're making your JPEG so it still looks good. Exactly. Exactly. The key is looks good, loads fast, and is still big enough. Um, Now we have, of course, um, you know, these... Um, um, Word, Word, WordPress themes that do a lot of the changing of sizes. Yeah, the responsive kind of on themes. the fly. Yep. Uh, exactly, the responsive themes, which is really cool because then it kind of, you know, you can give it a big image and then it'll kind of size it to whatever the specific, right. whatever it's being um, um, shown at. So, um, you know, the best way to do it is if you don't have a responsive theme, if it's possible for you to find out through, let's say, analytics or whatnot, what is the screen size that the majority of the people are viewing your work at? Sure. Um, use that as a top number, and then take that and then absolutely dumb it down as low as you can get, but so that it's still acceptable to you, that right. it actually still right. looks good at that specific size, and then it can dumb itself down however you want to after that. But the largest picture, you need it to load fast but you still need it to look good at that size. Yeah, well, a lot of these new themes that photographers are using for their sites are have full screen rotators. Right. So the entire background of the of the website, like let's say the homepage, is a massive image rotator. So, you know, I love them. You have They're to nice. Yeah, you have to decide, all right, how big do you feel that these images really need to appear? Now, if if you're working for a 13-inch screen, um, you know, that's different, of course, I'm working for a 24 inch screen. So you can make the compression greater 
when it's on a smaller screen. But now if somebody does go to a desktop and they do view it full screen, like if they expand their window out and that image just scales up and up and up, um, it may look soft, it may not look yeah. great. But that's kind of that fine line that you have to determine for yourself. And you need to make sure that your responsive themes are automatically creating you know, new images at these yeah, smaller multiple sizes. Images. Right. Yeah, that's what that is cool though. A lot of them do that, yes. which is really neat. So you'll have you can upload your massive one. Right. It, you know, it will shrink it to let's say um screen size, let's say you're saying 13 inches, and then it'll shrink one down to let's say a tablet size, right. and it'll shrink one down to a phone size, so on and so forth. So you you know, the viewer always gets the absolute best experience or the best view of your image possible. So responsive yep. themes are definitely a no-brainer, but if like if you don't have one, you know, you need to take into account, you know, what is that top size and right. make sure that it looks its absolute very best. But the you know, the side of course is it needs to load fast. So yes. it's that it's that, you know, balancing act that you have to do to to make sure because I mean, you know, many times I'll go to like a photographer's um, website, you know, they'll they'll write to us with a question, so we'll go and kind of um, take a look at their website and some of them will be like loading and loading yeah. and loading and loading. And it's like, you know, the ones that have these huge, the themes that have the huge pictures in the background are notorious for this. Um, yes. if they're not written well and they're not like loading the background, the next image and it's waiting and rotating, it just, it doesn't give it's a bad a good experience. impression. Bad, bad experience. It's, it's almost as bad as having like a WordPress style, um, portfolio type of blog as a photographer and instead of like showing only, let's say two or three blog posts on the front screen, on the front page, they do 30. Yeah. And now, and they're all full of images. And they're all so full of like images and all of those images it. need to load. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. Horrible. Horrible. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Yeah, don't That's, do that. Don't do that. Get, definitely keep, good. keep your blog down to a minimum, especially if you have a lot of images. Um, the other, you know, another big thing, you know, and this is really kind of another topic that we should probably get into at another time, but... You know, this load speed also has a lot to do with your server. You know, so yes. many of so many people out there go the cheap route with hosting and they go for these five dollar a month server accounts. And yes. it's on a shared server with thousands of other websites, and you're sharing resources from that computer with all of these other websites. And if they have high traffic volumes, it's going to knock down the speed that your website runs at. So server speed is really important. You know, I definitely, I always say, you know, don't go for the cheapest one out there. You don't need right. to go with the most expensive one either, but you, you kind of need something in between yeah, that's going to give you the best results. Absolutely. But you know what? We'll get into that another time. Yeah, they, uh, write that one down. Yeah, I'll right? write we'll that have to, We'll have to talk more about that. So, you know, so last week, we, you know, we talked obviously about the images and what image size to give to the client and, you know, not to give basically the client, you know, the... Uh, you know, the barn, the horse, the cow, the chickens, the whole thing, right, right, you know, um, out uh, out of the gate. You want to hold something back um, and right. kind of give them what they want and don't go past that because this way it gives you the ability to sell them something in the future. That's how sure. we make our money. Yep. We don't, you know, the, the initial session might not be the money maker. The money maker might be the book later or the big wall, you know, um, um, portrait you know, this on canvas or something. So right. you want right. to give them what they want and don't go overboard um, past that. You know? Yeah, so not this unless week, that's agreed upon up front and they're paying right. for the the cow and the farm. And, you know, exactly. The whole, yeah. And then of course you're going to give it to them. You're not going to hold back. No, you're so, not going to hold back. Right. So this week, you know, the idea that we're going to talk about is, you know, so, so what do we charge? You know, what mm -hmm. is the charge for what we are giving them? And, you know, we've had a, we had this conversation, you know, a while ago and we had it again, um, I think it was yesterday, the day before, and we got into a fight and kind of an argument back and forth as we always do, <laughs> because that's, that's what a good, uh, um, uh, co-host do, you know, with each other. That's right. So yin and yang, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, I'm sure you guys have listened to the show hopefully for the last year and a half, you'll see that. You know, my ideas on stuff are different than Trevor's and, sure. and we kind of play off each other, um, positives and negatives. And you'll probably hate me and like him or hate him like me. But you just, you know, that's just the way it goes. Yep. Um, but anyway, so, um, you know, we were discussing this and we're going back and forth. And I'm like, you know, you can't, you know, you can't have a, a price list and charge everyone 
the same on the, uh, the same price on the price list. And we were kind of going back and forth and you didn't really know what I was saying. And, and I was kind of, you know, kind of pulling both ways. We we're kind of going back and forth. But the idea is that, you know, if my, my thought on this is, you know, as we, we are in a destination location here. So, and I deal with people that are locals and I deal with people that are from New York, LA. I deal with model actors, Right. Um, actresses right. from you've all got over a, the you've got a range of clients and a range of income levels that you're exactly with. so you know the the multi million billionaire you know right. has an expectation of X um, and the local that needs an actor headshot is just starting to get you know started um, has you know an expectation of why and an amount of cost of why that they're willing to spend too. Right. So, right. you know, if you went out, you know, if we put out a price list and said, okay, a actor headshot is this price. What would happen then is either you would be too high for the locals, right? Right. Um, or you would be too low for the folks that are looking for something, let's say better or that are coming from a more affluent Right. state um, or location or whatever it is. So this is kind of what we were kind of going back and forth and we were kind of discussing and fighting about. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, you know, my take on it was, you know, I thought you were trying to say like, you know, oh, you charge people that have more money more just because they have more money. And and after further discussion, that wasn't ca the case. That was That's what was pissing me off. Right. So, <laughs> so exactly. no, that's absolutely right. I mean, you... You can't charge the same thing to everybody, even though you're doing the same type of work. If you're doing a portrait for a local and they're expecting to kind of get something down and dirty, crash and burn it through, just, you know, minor color correction, and that's kind of it, then, yeah, of course, that's going to be, you can do that for less money because it's taking less time. But now if you're doing another portrait, maybe you're spending a little bit more time on set set up and you know cost you know outfit changes they're doing hair and makeup you know they're um and they're expecting a much higher end result with full-blown retouching like you say poor level retouching and all of that well you're doing more work so of course that that portrait is going to cost more and, exactly. and that totally makes sense um yeah you know so, I, I mean you could have the, you know the exact same headshot or the same let's say a model or actor headshot um, right. that could cost, let's say, you know, $150 or the same headshot could be 500 to $750. Right. And, um, you know, so, you know, what goes into it? What determines? Um, well, you know, going back to who the person is that's coming to you, you need to kind of research who it is that is looking for your service. Right. You know, if it's someone famous that, is looking for you because they saw your work and they might not know you from Adam, but they really like your work and they're looking at it like, wow, I right. mean, this is in, you know, all right, so I'm coming down to Florida. I got to fly in. I'm doing something, you know, maybe in Palm Beach or in Orlando. Let me see if there's a local um, photographer down there that I can try or, or use. So when they come to you, they have an expectation that is, you know, let's say much higher than what a local would have down here. Right. They they say, okay, I need something absolutely gorgeous, amazing, or maybe they've had gorgeous and amazing work done wherever they come from. So they and have that's this their level of expectation. That's what they expect right. from you. So if you go in and say, okay, my you know headshot session is one hundred fifty dollars. Let's just say for an example, they're going to be like. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. you're one of those cheap guys. You're just going to bang it. It's not going to look very good. Uh, yeah, that's that level of expectation. You know, your value, you don't want to diminish your value by having a price too low in comparison to the customer's expectations and what they're looking for, what they want. Exactly. Now, the whole priceless thing, I mean, that can work if you are working with a certain level of client. If you are only working local, and you're only doing weddings, let's say, or you're only doing headshots, and it's all the same type of work over and over and over again, then A, that could probably be kind of a, a boring way to lead your photography career, but it's bread and butter, right? I mean, we gotta pay Absolutely. the bills. So at that point, maybe a price list works. But on the other hand, if you do have a variety of clients, you know, wanting different things, having different expectations, and maybe the price list doesn't work, and maybe you really need to quote those out per job, and right. quoting it out, you know, I do a lot of uh, client work 
And I base everything on hours of how long I think it's gonna take me to do this project. Now I've been doing graphic design for so long, I've, I've got this nailed down. I mean, I know how long a logo design is gonna take. I know that if I've got a local guy who's a contractor that's looking for something to you know put on his business card and his, some stationery to use on his website, and he's got a certain level of expectation, he's got a certain budget, I know how long I can put into that logo and still meet his budget and still deliver something that looks good. Now, on the other hand, if I have Sony Electronics or you know any other you know large corporate client that I've worked with, they're not going to get the same level of work that I'm doing for this local contractor. They're going to get a lot more hours involved. There's going to be a lot more exploratory work. We're going to be going back and forth with the marketing managers multiple times with revisions. It's you know it's all decisions by committee. You know, everybody's got to put their thumbprint on it. it, you know, so then you're making tweaks and you're changing this and you're doing that. And then somebody has a totally different idea that they want to see. So that's a totally different price structure. Absolutely. And, you know, the key to that is, um, uh, like you said, how much time. Yes. And time is the key, no matter if you're billing hourly or if you're billing per project. Um, the amount of time that it's going to take you to... Um, basically soup to nuts from beginning to end of the project. And let's say we use, you know, a headshot for an example, like we started out with. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're doing a local headshot and let's say you're gonna be charging $150 for it, um, you should be doing X amount of time of retouching on that picture. Yes. No more. No more. No less. Yep. No less. Um, because you don't want your work out there dumbed down in any way. Right. But you want to do X amount of time, which you're comfortable of retouching on it and no more. And that's it. Yes. Now the, the other side of that is now you're doing, you know, the uh, actor that flew in from LA and they want to uh, test you out unless you're charging 500 on that. Yep. You need to be doing Y amount of retouching on it. You need Absolutely. to probably do as I do um, poor level retouching where it's, you know, non-discernible. You can't tell that retouching was ever done. Sure. Um, and maybe this, you, you want to, maybe you want to retouch three images three of the best images to show them, to select Instead from, of as one. opposed right. to just doing one. Absolutely. Maybe you want to give them three yes. instead of giving them one. Absolutely. And that also goes into the amount of time that you want to use. So, you know, uh, if you use time as a base and you use, you know, what is your client's expectation right. um, of both quality, quantity, um, cost, quality, quantity, and cost, um, you'll probably be able to get within a ballpark on what you need to charge. Um, and by us telling you what that is, it's not going to work for your specific no. No, um, location, obviously. I would say obviously, figure but, out an hourly rate. Figure out an hourly right. rate that you feel comfortable with based on your experience as a photographer, based on the level of work that you've done, based on the quality of your portfolio. If you're just starting out and you've got you know just some snaps of some your family members and stuff, you're not gonna be able to go out there and charge 250 bucks an hour, I'm sorry guys. You're gonna be hard pressed to find people to pay that. On the other hand, you know, are you worth 50 bucks an hour? Are you worth $75 an hour? That's what you need to determine. How, what is your skill set? What is your level of expertise? That directly is proportionate to what you should and what you can get for your hourly rate. Now right, you may be able to sneak in a couple people and get 150 bucks or 200 bucks an hour, but what's gonna happen is the majority of the people are going to see the level of work that you're giving to them. They're gonna be unhappy for the money they've paid. If you're yeah, not- and then you part. won't get the repeat business yes. and the, um, you know, the word of mouth. And that that's where we, you know, photographers, where we make it is word of mouth. Absolutely. But, you know, um, I hate to always, you know, we're, we're talking about actors and actresses, but this is the same, this, this principle, the same idea um, goes along with wedding photographers. It's sure. the exact same thing. You know, if you, um, you know, have a bride that's coming in, that's flying in, that's a destination wedding, and, you know, they, they are staying at the highest end hotel, yeah. and you know that there's someone that is extremely affluent, when you quote them, don't just quote them just willy-nilly with your regular price list. Get to know who they are before you quote and then right. what is that expectation right. find out you know they might you know your lo your locals might want you know be happy with a little 8 by 8 um uh book whereas this bride might want a full 12 by 12 which is 24 inch um spread 
you know, yeah. with, you know, 28 spreads in it and, you know, leather and, the whole, you know, the whole nine yards yeah. need to know. And, and this way, when you do quote it, you're quoting it appropriately and you will be most likely to get the job in comparison to, you know, this bride is ready to pay 5,000 for the photographer. You go in at $1,250 and she, she doesn't even look at your work at that point. No, you know? no, like, because you're going to be too or, underpriced. She's got a certain yeah. expectation level and she's exactly. just going to think you're not qualified to do the work. Or your work looks really good, but she still doesn't take you because she's like, well, maybe this guy is not reliable or something. I mean, that's right. just a crazy price. Everyone else wants, you know, 3,500 to 5,000. This guy wants 1250. Yep. Something is wrong. And, you know, us, you know, human beings, we really base our our ideas on the quality of something based on the price that we pay for Absolutely. it. It's a sad thing, but that is just simply it. When you buy a BMW or, um, you know, a Mercedes, you know, you expect a certain level of, of quality of craftsmanship in comparison to buying a Honda or a Toyota or whatnot. That's, a, that's you know, a half or a third or a quarter of the price. Absolutely. We are really price oriented. So, yep. you know, really be diligent and looking up what, you know, who the person is that's coming to you prior to putting out that quote. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, I think that's good information. It's a good way to get you guys started. Next week, we're gonna be talking about uh, usage fees and usage Huge rights. Topics. So this kind of parlays into the last two conversations about pricing, what to charge, and, and really kind of taking it to the next level and making sure that you're being compensated fairly for where your work is being used. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, all right Trev, we are gone. Huh? I think it is time. Yeah, we're running over. Oh my God, we're late. Yes. Yeah. Need to get out of here. So, the usual, Joe. If somebody wants to connect with you online, what's the best place to reach you? Well, find me on Twitter, and that's at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Excellent. You can connect with me on Twitter at Trevor Kern. That's all right, guys. Thanks a lot, everyone. We are out of here. Once again, you can get our show notes for this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 90. And don't forget, if you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star review in iTunes. You can go there simply by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash iTunes. So keep your questions and comments coming, and we'll talk to you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.